today we're very pleased to welcome back to our studios our very good friend Kyle Shutt. Kyle is an insect management technician with the Schuylkill Conservation District. I don't want to say you just come here to talk about bugs, but he does talk about bugs and how, you know, we can stay safe from things like mosquitoes and ticks and all that kind of stuff, but you also bring us a lot of important information. So Kyle, I know it's already, you're thinking about mosquito season already. We want the warmer weather. We just wish the mosquitoes would stay away. Yeah, uh, <laughs> especially this time of year, we always wish for the warm weather, but not so much the bugs that come with it. Um, but the last few weeks here hasn't really felt like winter, so I always feel like that's a good time to get the word out to start thinking about getting rid of some mosquito habitat around the house um, and start planning for summer to try to make it a little bit more enjoyable without some of those pesky bugs. So what should we be doing? Yeah, so this time of year, um, now that the snow has receded, and hopefully we're not going to get any more. Um, seems like we always do get a March storm, though. But some of the things you can do is just see um, if any debris has clogged up your, or your gutters um, around the roof, um, or if you've had anything that moved or got damaged during a storm that could pull and collect water around the yard, um, or even any low spots in the yard or storm drains that you might have um, around your house. Those are things where water can collect, and those are obviously going to be places where mosquitoes are going to look to breed. So getting ahead of that now can uh, make things a little bit easier going into summer. Absolutely. And is it, I don't know, is this even possible to tell? We're having kind of a mild winter. Does that mean we're going to have more mosquitoes than normal? Um, it's tough to say. We do have a lot of water around right now um, with a lot of rainfall we've had this winter and some snow. Uh, so if that continues into early spring, that's going to provide some early habitat for early um, breeding mosquitoes. So that could lead to a pretty heavy kickoff to the year. Um, but typically our mosquitoes really fall. Um, their populations go by the wet cycles that we have in the summer. Uh, so if we get some rain followed by a lot of hot, humid weather, that's when we really see the mosquitoes start pumping out. And then that's when we really have the problems. Good information to know. Now you said you wanted to tell us about native plants. What does that mean? What are native plants and why are they so important? Yeah, um, so this is, you know, a little bit of some things I've been getting into with my work too, dealing with um, invasive problems uh, plant-wise that we have around the county. And, you know, the opposite of the invasive plants is our native species that we have in Pennsylvania. Um, so that basically is just any plant that's um, been in the region. It's specifically, you know, you know to us, to Schuylkill County. Um, so it's important to have those because that increases our biodiversity and that just creates um, better habitat for animals, um, insects, bugs, anything like that that's out there. They always um, deal with natives better than invasives. It provides better habitat, better food, um, and better cover for them to, to live and thrive in. What are some native plants? Yeah, so a couple that come to mind, especially in the garden setting, uh, that some people can probably look at um, for springtime planning would be the wild blue indigos, the wild geraniums, um, and then some of the iris species that we have in Pennsylvania. So those are going to be your first um, bloomers in the spring. Usually we're going to see those, um, you know, peak around April, May, June. Um, so those can be good additions to the garden, you know, for thinking ahead here um, for the first things we want to see bloom in the spring. Can they go to a website or anything to find this information? Um, yeah, the Department of Pennsylvania Department of Ag has really good information um, on native species planning. Also, um, DCNR has a great uh, um, native uh, plant selection, and they can tell you different organizations that actually are certified and sell native plants in your area. Um, so that can be a good way to you know get your native garden started and find resources where you can purchase them. Now, National Invasive Species Week. That's a mouthful, <laughs> and I said it correctly. Tell us about this, and why do you have it? Yep, um, so this is actually, this is a, it's a nationwide thing. It's um, predominantly run out of DC, so it has to do with a lot of suit and ties down there, um, and it's a lot of, uh, legislation and stuff that gets talked about, but it's important um, because the nation dumps a lot of money into invasive species control. Um, I believe it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars every year um, gets spent on trying to control invasives and the uh, problems associated with them. Um, so if anybody's interested, that runs February I believe it's 26th to March 3rd, um, and there'll be webinars, um, different information packets uh, put out, and that's all through the National Invasive Species Awareness Week. Uh, I believe it's .org. You can find that information on there if anybody's interested in um, you know, figuring out things they can do to help control invasives, um, or like I said, planning natives. Now that's national an entire week, but now there's a special day in Pennsylvania, so tell us about that. 
Yep, so that's Pennsylvania's Native Species Day. That's May 16th, and I think this will be the third year uh, that PA has declared a Native Species Day. Um, so that's just a celebration of the native species that we have in Pennsylvania, their importance, um, and it just describes a little bit about how they can help Pennsylvania's ecosystem and gives um, people an idea of what they can plant um, and how it helps benefit the wildlife around them. And I believe that is run through the state's Department of Ag, so they have the information um, about local events. Uh, there will also be so social media postings and a lot of different ways to get the information about that uh, PA Native Species Day. And for more information, you can always get in touch with Kyle as well, and Porcupine Pat and Emily and everybody at the Schuylkill Conservation District. They're a wealth of information. They provide education and outreach, so um, you guys do a phenomenal job. So keep up the good work. Thanks, Lisa. It's always fun coming on and talking. Our pleasure.